Let's bring in uh, today's uh, first guest, radio analyst Riley Nelson, former Cougar quarterback, whose haircut looks incredible, by the way. Joins BYU Sports Nation. Riley, how you doing, man? You look awesome. Oh, man, it's so kind. Shout out to Blair Randall at Buffalo Barbers in North Salt Lake for taking care of me. And I got to tell you, it's been a long road. Uh, Jason and Greg <laughs> and all those guys, over the course of the season, I had to grow out the top long. My hair doesn't naturally lay down, so it has to be really long. So the top of my hair actually like comes down to my mouth. But anyway, for Blair to be able to kind of blend up the sides, keep it tight, and now that I finally get some lay down in the back, it's been great. And let's be honest, I normally wouldn't spend this much time on my hair, but I'd say probably 30% of what I've remembered for from my time at BYU has to do with my hair. <laughs> I was so gonna, I think it's relevant to our discussion today. I was going to say, did Tom Homa ask you to get a haircut this time too? <laughs> no, because I kept it high and tight. See, I tried to let it sneak down the back, back you know, a decade ago when I was playing. But uh, now that I'm in the professional world, I, I got to keep it a little bit tighter. Is that, is that a one on the side? Are you going one and a half? Yeah, so for if you guys want to ask now, Blair is extremely skilled, so <laughs> my guy's awesome. But if you want to ask your own guy, so I'm skin up to the top of the ear, and then top of the ear, he just blends it oh. up up to where I got the length on top. So that, that's Next what level. I got. It. It's All right. Well, Riley, thanks for joining us. Thanks it was for good joining to talk us to you. Yeah. For Barber Talk. <laughs> no, just kidding. Let's talk about <laughs> Yeah, we'll see you guys. Yes, yeah, bye. Week. Yeah. Let's talk about Jaron Hall. So, Cam Miller, who, uh, Pro Football Focus, he was the first to really idea that, hey, Zach Wilson's special. He's going to do something next level. Andre Ware was in there as well. Even before I think we thought, hey, Zach's going to be amazing, right? So, he's saying now um, recently that, that Jaron Hall is a first round potential in 2023's draft. What are your thoughts on that comment? That's quite the statement. I, I don't know that I'm there yet, but I also – so you say first round. Is Jaron Hall a potential NFL draft pick? Most definitely. Draft order is dependent a lot more on what does the class around you look, right? Like Zach Wilson was number two last year, but if Zach Wilson was – you know, in that draft class where Jamison Mariota went one, two, and you had a bunch of other, you know, guys in it, you know, he's maybe the fifth or sixth guy off the board, right? And and then fifth or sixth guy off the board, well, what are the needs of the other teams in the first round? Who's actually in the market for a quarterback? So now where someone actually gets drafted, there's a lot more circumstances around it. Of course, you have these draft scout guys who issue grades, um, he says he has first round potential. I don't think at least from other quarterbacks in the caliber from my, you know, untrained scouting eye, I wouldn't say necessarily that he's exhibiting the, the, the kind of talent level and first round skill set yet, but is he on his way to be knowing that he's coming back for another year that he's been under the tutelage of Aaron Roderick, who obviously was able to take Zach from let's, let's not forget that, you know, Hawaii bowl and that, that uh, 2019 season coming back where we weren't quite sure what we had in Zach, but a year with Aaron Roderick, obviously working with John Beck and the guys down at 3D QB, and then Zach gets taken two off the board. I don't think that's outside the realm of possibility for Jaron Hall. The one thing that's different while Zach is, is durability and people will say, well, Zach had some injuries. Zach hurt his hand by, you know, hitting it on a helmet, right? He broke his hand, hitting it on a helmet. Outside of that, he was able to kind of stay clear. When you get guys that have, either head injuries or torso injuries. Those are kind of more durability issues than single event issues. For me, if Jaron's going to be there, he, there's definitely some aspects of his game for him to be a bona fide first round draft pick that, that needs to improve. But even bigger than those, you know, on the field um, technical aspects, the biggest question he has to answer is, can he be there for his team for an entire, you know, 13 game slate? Riley, let's stay with the quarterback discussion, but move back a spot. Uh, we found out in the last couple of days, Baylor Romney uh, announced that his time at BYU had come to an end. That moves then Jacob Conover as the backup to Jaron Hall for next year. And, and obviously, you know, regardless of the quarterbacks, it, it seems like backups are playing um, in, in college football these days because, you know, the, the likelihood that a starting quarterback stays healthy the entire year just doesn't seem to be too realistic. What are your thoughts on Conover being the, the main backup to Jaron Hall? 
Well, I, I think he's ready and excited and embracing his opportunity. Obviously, we got a very small sample size this year against Utah State. That game was already at hand, and so he wasn't asked to do much. What he was asked to do, I thought, was pretty good. I mean, it, obviously, he didn't blow the doors off in, in his first few snaps, but you see a lot of you see a lot of backups that come into games and situations like that and the lead dwindles or the game is all of a sudden in jeopardy for the time that small amount of time against Utah State with you know with Jacob Conover under the helm the game was never in jeopardy he wasn't out there looking nervous or mistake he didn't give you any indication that he can't do the job and I know that he personally is uh you know a guy that's He's an extremely hard worker. He's a guy that's in, in embraced this opportunity, but and, but he's embracing the opportunity without getting impatient. He knows that he's got a long career ahead of him at, at BYU and and to be able to do this. So I, I feel very comfortable with Jacob Conover. Uh, obviously, there's the Boise State transfer and Finnegan, who's a guy that's played and has D1 reps. It's nice that he's adding uh, some depth to the room. And then I, I hear nothing but good things, even though he's a little bit different player, a unique player in Soljay Maava Peters. He maybe would the offense might look a little bit different under him. The offense definitely has aspects that can play to his skill set. So between those four guys, I, I think the quarterback room is in pretty good shape. That said, if we hear, you know, that there's some activity in the transfer portal and they're bringing in another guy, I'm of the opinion that competition breeds excellence and it never hurts to have a lot of talented uh, signal callers. I wouldn't be surprised, like you just said, if you only add somebody from the transfer portal in the quarterback room. We'll see in this offseason. We're talking to Riley Nelson, BYU radio analyst here on BYU Sports Nation. Let's talk about the running backs. Obviously losing the greatest rushing season ever uh, from Tyler Algier is a big loss. BYU brings back guys like Jackson McChesney, Lopini Katoa. They really liked Miles Davis going into the season before an injury. Does BYU need to mine the transfer portal for someone to be a starter type uh, to compete with that group? I think so, if only for the fact that it is so rare now to have that premier back, that every down back that BYU had in Tyler Algier, right? The guy that's going to shoulder the majority of the carries. If you look across the, the majority of offenses in college football and even pro football now, they, there are two to three backs that get significant snaps and significant carries. I mean, significant in terms of their share of the load, right? Like you got guys going a third, a third, or a half in 25, 25. In other words, there are two to three backs getting utilized in most every productive uh, offense in today's football game. So you just rattled off, you know, three guys you could throw. I know coming out of camp, they were excited about Hinkley Rapati is another guy that could potentially be, you know, one of those physical bruisers, short yardage back. But again, Tyler Algier did that. Tyler Algier was your big play back. He was your short yardage back. He was your screen game back. Um, it's great to have Lopini Katoa back from a leadership standpoint. Obviously, they have Harvey Younga back, uh, you know, coaching and managing the chemistry and development of that room. But running back is one. Quarterback's a little bit different. As we've seen with Utah, the transfer portal, there, it, it, it's a really, quarterback's a really unique position in that you're messing with the psyche and leadership of the team. And as we saw Cam Rising get passed over twice before Utah eventually figuring out that he was the guy, you have to be really sensitive to that dynamic at the quarterback position. But I would argue almost every other position on the field, especially skill position like wide receiver, uh, running back, cornerback, guys who operate on an island and sometimes, and by that I mean basically hey, it's wide zone to the left. You hand the guy off under, you know, he doesn't necessarily have to coordinate with anybody if he's going to cut back to the backside A gap. He just plays instinctually and based on his talent. Um, whenever you have a position that's like that, the more talent you can throw at it, the better off you're going to be as an offense and as a football team. All right, let's, uh, let's wrap things up talking a little defense. On that side of the ball, the biggest area of improvement needed is what? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I thought our linebackers were really strong and deep coming into the year, and they were tested, I mean, to the to the nth degree, right? With, with I mean, you obviously still had Ben Bywater, but he was banged up. And Max Tooley, and of course, we saw what that, that picture he posted on. And those were the guys that were playing, not to mention that you had, you know, Will Gar and Peely that had suffered season-ending injuries earlier. So uh, as much as I want to add depth to that position, the next position I look at is cornerback. Cornerbacks was another one that kind of BYU was kind of limping to the, to the finish line. Um, 
it'd be somewhere in there for me, Jason. It's it's hard to say which one. I, I think to uh, looking at the kind of offenses and the kind of uh, threats that will be that BYU will be facing in the Big Twelve. My gut tells me that we're we're maybe further behind in the cornerback defensive back position than we are in a front seven linebacker. So I would probably put cornerback over linebacker, but those would be the two position groups that I would focus on most if I were, you know, making those decisions. We'll see what the portal yields. We'll see what kind of development BYU can uh, continue to do among its players, which they've been pretty good at. Riley, we appreciate the time and uh, you know, keep keep the product in there, man. It looks it's looking great. fresh, my friend. Yeah, no, the key is don't let it go. When you do a skin fade, don't let it go more than three weeks. After that, it starts looking scraggly. So I'll see you guys next time I'm on with more hair tips. Best looking radio analyst in the game, Riley Nelson. Thanks again. (laughs)